Welcome to the Greenbridge Minute, brought to you by Greenbridge Health and Greenbridge Society. My name is Dr. Gerald Knapp. Years ago, one of my first experiences in medical cannabis involved a patient driving over three hours one way to purchase an RSO product. I'll describe RSO later in the video, but it's not one of the most popular dosage forms. This patient told me how he had suffered from Crohn's disease for years and how RSO had helped relieve his symptoms without the help of prescription drugs. This was the very first time that I heard of cannabis changing the life of a Crohn's patient. And we have seen it help many others along the way. Inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, consists mainly of two conditions, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Both involve an autoimmune response where the immune system attacks healthy tissue, causing inflammation. Over 1.6 million people in the United States suffer from IBD. There is no known cure for IBD and many patients will suffer with symptoms for decades. We know cannabis to have immune regulating and anti-inflammatory properties with little to no toxic effects. Based on the anecdotal evidence seen in medical dispensaries and the current scientific evidence, cannabis products should be considered in these patients and further research needs to be funded. Let's take a look at how cannabis can affect the GI tract. Our bodies possess the endocannabinoid system, which contains endogenous cannabinoids and receptors. In the gut, the endocannabinoid system helps maintain balance by modulating immune activity, motility, sensation, and secretion. Both CB1 and CB2 receptors are found in the GI tract. CB1 receptors are found in the nervous system of the gut, and many of the CB2 receptors in the gut are found on immune cells, such as activated macrophages. The CB2 receptors may play a larger role in inhibiting inflammation. So we know that the endocannabinoid system plays a role in gut health. What evidence do we have relating cannabis to improving IBD symptoms? Researchers have found abnormalities of the endocannabinoid system within the biopsy samples of patients with severe intestinal disease. These samples showed altered levels of endocannabinoids and CB receptors. In 2011, an observational study was reported in the Israel Medical Association Journal that looked at 30 patients with Crohn's disease. 21 of the 30 patients improved significantly after treatment with cannabis. The need for other medications and surgery in these patients decreased remarkably as well. A small placebo-controlled trial published in 2013 looked at 21 Crohn's patients who did not respond to therapy with steroids, immunomodulators, or anti-tumor necrosis factor agents. This study focused on an eight-week trial of inhaled Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, or Delta-9 THC. Five of the 11 subjects in the THC group achieved complete remission. Three of the patients were weaned from steroid dependency, and patients receiving cannabis reported improved appetite and sleep with no significant side effects. Although this is a small study, almost complete remission in 50% of patients who do not respond to other treatments is very impressive. IBD patients are already using cannabis to help relieve symptoms, and many of them are not under the care of a medical professional. In another study published in 2011, 100 ulcerative colitis patients and 191 Crohn's patients completed questionnaires in an outpatient clinic. 50% of the Crohn's patients and 33% of the ulcerative colitis patients were lifetime users of cannabis to relieve IBD symptoms. We encourage cannabis patients to work with an experienced medical professional. At Greenbridge Health, we work with patients one-on-one -on -one to find the best cannabis products and regimen for them. Although every patient is unique, we do see some general trends with patients suffering with Crohn's disease. Unfortunately, due to the lack of federal funding, much of this information is anecdotal. A common strategy is for patients to use longer acting products to help alleviate general symptoms. These are most likely having a greater impact on patients over the long term. Patients will also use inhaled products as a rescue medication for breakthrough symptoms. There are several longer acting dosage forms available, including tinctures and capsules. However, our Crohn's patients seem to respond best to RSO also known as Rick Simpson oil, which is a black and tarry substance that usually comes in an oral syringe. RSO can be tricky to dose. Some patients will squirt it out onto a cracker, cookie, or a piece of candy. A normal dose of RSO is roughly the size of a grain of rice. RSO is produced by a very simple extraction, and it is not nearly as purified as some other cannabis products. Although it is rare for cannabis companies to test for flavonoids, it is likely that the simply extracted RSO contains more of these natural chemicals. 
Flavonoids show promise in fighting chronic inflammation in certain cancers. It is always recommended to start at a low dose and increase slowly. Patients are instructed how to safely titrate their dose to find the sweet spot. This is where their symptoms are relieved, but they are not experiencing unwanted side effects or feeling over-medicated. In general, RSO products containing higher levels of CBD may be a better choice for Crohn's patients, especially during the day. CBD is able to decrease inflammation, regulate the immune system, and mitigate certain side effects of THC. In conclusion, cannabis should be considered for patients suffering from IBD, including Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. There is published an anecdotal evidence supporting the use of cannabis in these patients. And if used under the guidance of a medical professional and titrated appropriately, medical cannabis poses very little risk to the patient. If you would like to learn more or schedule a medical cannabis consultation, please go to our website, greenbridgehealth.com and make an appointment to meet with one of our experienced medical professionals. We look forward to helping guide you on your cannabis journey back to health.